This recording is for Felipe's entertainment purposes only. Please be advised that you are being recorded and anything that you say that sounds stupid will obviously become a clip. (laughs) (laughs) I just have to be quiet and let Jesse talk and refine. No, 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 Jennifer. There's some, there's some good clips. Jennifer, there's a a good quote in the book. I want to go right to, right to the book. This book, Lean Lean in Love, one of my favorite nonfiction books. (laughs) <laughs> books of all time this is probably the record holding most vulnerable book that i've ever read in my lifetime what? Asides, aside from some personal biographies okay so asterisk some yeah. some biographies i've read but but you know in recent years nothing even comes close to this and so i'm going to go right right to the book and jennifer says there's a quote here from jennifer and she said there are people who talk and there are people who do. And so you're trying to get, uh, put Jesse under the hot seat for, for his smooth talking media mogul ways. But uh, Jennifer, you are definitely an action superstar in this tribe. And then the other thing that's related to that, and look at this beautiful artwork here. The thing that's related to that, that I want to start with is the hashtag demo the divide. So why don't both of you unpack that hashtag for people that impossibly don't know what that means. So when we started this conversation on the 5S um, and personal relationships, again, I was very concerned, super concerned on uh, the conversations we were going to have because they were going to be a little bit squishy. And we, most of our peers, most of the people that are around us are in construction. And so we, I was, I was probably way more worried than Jesse was. I'm like, I don't want to lose people. I don't want people to go, okay, we're here because of Jen and Jess, but then they're talking about all this stuff that doesn't relate to us when it comes to the job site. And so I was like, Hey, we've got to make sure we're talking about job stuff. And we're also talking about personal stuff. So we started the very first one. We really focused on both sides and what we realized really, really quick when people showed up, they didn't care so much about the work stuff. Because the personal stuff transcended both sides. And I think that conversation got us talking, and I could be wrong, but and Jesse will correct me. But we realized like that put your lean hat on when you walk through the gate and you go and you go to work and you do all your lean stuff. Then you take that lean hat off when you walk back out of the gate and then you go and live your life. And, you know, as much as we talk about lean as a lifestyle and lean as a way of interacting with every person in your life, that hashtag came about by us going like, we need to demo that divide and make it be, this is the way you live. A couple of things, 100% accurate, right? I'm not going (laughs) to disagree with Jen, even though you could hear like the real truth on the recording from the link construction blog webinar about the real history. I'm joking. Um, (laughs) We did like initially when we were strategizing for the live stream, it's like, man, we really, really need to talk about the job and, and so forth. And like Jen said, everybody was like, no, no, no. We want to hear more about the personal vulnerable stuff. And so the idea of both sides of the fence came up, right? Like we're human beings on the inside of the fence of the job site and the outside. And we need to start appreciating all of it, the entire, the whole person. And if some people may not know, but you might have heard, Felipe, where Jen, Adam, and I would just say hashtag. And so that's kind of like a little thing that we do when somebody says something really cool. If I say hashtag, that's mine. <laughs> and so it's always hard to tell who came up with it. But it, it was in line with this both sides of the gate, like appreciation for the entire human being. And you already know, Felipe, like my heart is with the traits. And there's a divide between general contractors and trades people, like the people that install the work. And there's a divide between appreciating the professional and the person, the human being. And there's so there's all kinds of divides, right? We did think about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Divides. So it started off with demo the divide between being the person, being one person at work and being a different person outside of work. But as it stated, hashtag demo the divide is really about knocking down all of those silos so that we can better appreciate everybody and create 
a more sustainable environment for for everybody in our not just our industry but we're we're just going to start with the construction industry and you know our 10 year plan we know exactly when we'll finish there and then move into other industries <laughs> i love that ladies and gentlemen we are inside the gate outside the gate the fence is down Welcome to the EBFC Show, the easier, better for construction podcast. I'm your host, Felipe Engineer Manriquez. This show is all about the business of construction. Today's episode is sponsored by Bosch Refine My Site is a cloud-based construction collaboration platform that applies lean principles to enable your entire team to plan, communicate, and execute in real time. It's the digital tool that works in tandem with your last planner system process and puts it all together in one simple, collaborative ecosystem system. This easy to use platform is available in English, German, Spanish, Portuguese, and French and can be used on desktops, tablets, and mobile devices. According to Spencer Easton, scheduling manager at Oakland Construction, Refine My Site, in my opinion, is the best, leanest tool on the market for the last planet. Here's what our users have to say. We've looked at three other digital scheduling platforms and none compare to the straightforward approach Refine My Site takes. From milestone planning all the way down to daily tasks, this program gives every general contractor and their trade partners meaningful collaboration, accountability, and KPIs. Register today to try Refine My Site for free for 60 days. Today's show is also sponsored by the Lean Construction Institute. LCI is working to lead the building industry in transforming its practices and culture. Its vision is to create a healthy and thriving industry that delivers outstanding project outcomes every time for everyone. Check the show notes for more information. Now to the show. Well, Welcome I, to the show. I, oh, you I want to add, add, oh, add? Oh, no, oh, I just want to add. No, I just want to add. I just want to add one more thing because no, because Jesse made a good point of even within the gate and and all the divides, which then also led to hashtag more than a vest, and that's another one that we really focused on because when you go on the job site, it's like you see vests and those are your people and those people are producing outcomes and those outcomes are what pay our bills and create the work and that's what's important. And we're like, oh wait a minute. Just because they got a vest on, just because it shows that there's someone that's important to that job because they're they're producing work, that, that doesn't mean that's who they are. And so it was a that was another one that led that started from you know demo the divide to hashtag more than more than a vest because we all are more than just the vest that we put on when we show up at work. I love that so much. It's almost like when we do the if we're knocking the gate down, people do introductions, like it's so easy for us to just say like the logo on the back of our vest, right? Instead of just saying, I'm Jen, or yeah. I'm Jesse, or Jesus, depending on the day of the week and where he's at, or I'm Felipe. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Jennifer, Lacey, Jesse, Jesus, Hernandez. I am so happy to have both of you on the show to share Lean in Love. Oh, look at that. I love the emojis. So, And there's emojis all throughout the book. Love the handwriting throughout the book. We're going to get into the book, but before we do, for those of you who listen to the EBFC show and you don't know these two beautiful human beings that I have the honor, the privilege to call friends. Absolutely. Let's hear from both of them. Jesse. My name's Jesus Hernandez. Uh, everybody knows me as Jesse. I'm good with both. Some people even call me Chewy and other things. Um, but my <laughs> mom gave me the name Jesus. And so like, if she hears this and I don't say that's my name, I'm in trouble. And I don't want to be in trouble. The holidays are coming, right? Like I want right. to have cookies and delicious food. Um, <laughs> came up in the industry, came up as a plumber. I began my career in the industry as a plumbing apprentice. Spent a lot of time on that side of the business for about 20 years. Went from installing to designing uh, professional development programs for our teams. And then got introduced to lean as a foreman, as a plumbing foreman, practice of the stuff of whatever it was I was learning at the time, exposed or revealed aptitude that I was not aware of. And so then I went like double down, triple down on learning about that stuff and applying those things in my life and then transferring that knowledge to others. And so somewhere along the way, I turned into a lean freakazoid, uh, worked for GCs for a few years. Um, as a regional lean manager, 
And then I worked for an owner for a little bit of time. And so along that way, the most critical thing, I mean, maybe the most valuable thing that I've learned is that we are way more alike than we are different. And my perspective and, and my experience has equipped me with an ability to, to speak multiple languages, all in English, but speak the language of the trade partner, speak the language of the project manager, speak the language of the executive, the superintendent. So I kind of feel like I have an unfair advantage because I can communicate with everybody, but it has perfectly armed me to serve in a very deep manner to help teams have a better time at work, reach their objectives, and and get vulnerable. Don't tell them that. I don't want them to know that they're going to end up being vulnerable, but that's where we're headed. That's me. And then and Jen, of course, I got lucky uh, that, that Jen just sought me out, flew all the way to Dallas just to meet me. <laughs> that's Thank so true. You, she she sure. chased you down. I, I, was, I was there when it was happening. Uh, so, it's a true story. Dang people. it. Jesse's he's speaking truth right now. <laughs> I'm not so sure it was a sought out. It was more of a call out, but we'll go with that. Okay, we'll go with it. So I am Jennifer Lacey and my uh, role, I guess, full time is a lean practice leader for Robinson Morton, who is a national healthcare general contractor. And that is how I got in the same space with Felipe and Jesse is because of that role and the things that um, are passionate, you know, that I'm passionate about. Um, so been with Robinson Morton for 19 years, about eight years ago, got first introduced to lean and what that is um, in our industry, sat through an alignment meeting with a project in the back of the room talking about collaboration and continuous improvement and learning culture and leadership development. And I'm like, what is this? Because I, you know, obviously swam in this GC space for a long time, building relationships, no you know, the people part of our business and the importance of it. But we we're talking about these things at the job site with the owner and the designer and all of our trades. And I'm like, whoa, what is this? And so that was the moment that I all of a sudden saw that there was something else going on out there and that we maybe weren't doing it across the board at that point within Robbins and Morton. But I knew that it could change the way we build and the way we we, we do business. And so from that moment on, I was determined to learn anything and everything about lean in our workspace, in our lives, how that had to do with people and what that, you know, what data, all the things that, that play into that um, with flow and efficiency and waste and then asking questions and everybody saw me coming and they were like, oh gosh, here she comes. But, um, but what it did is it helped equip me with some things that maybe I didn't have coming in because my degree was in op operations management. So learning all the lean stuff in college, just-in-time delivery, manufacturing, all the things that mattered at that point, and then went into teaching and coaching. So it really didn't apply, but I didn't even realize that background plus teaching and coaching, then coming into construction and now being in a role where I'm leading that change in a national general contractor's you know, just everywhere is the space that we are. All of that's playing into how I am able to connect with people, how I'm able to cultivate change and um, inspire and influence people. And I don't think I knew all that when it was happening, but now all of that and then colliding, I'm going to say colliding with Jesse, um, allowed us to then start have some con having some conversations on the importance of people and how they play a role, which we already knew they did. But the, if we're not focused on the people and the things that are happening inside the gate, outside the gate, when it comes to work, then our, then the outcomes are going to be impacted by that. And so we thought, you know what, there's plenty of people out there focused on the tools and the processes, and they are amazing. There are, they're part of, they're our friends, and they're people that, that are really important in this industry. But what we don't have a lot of is people out there focusing on the human part of our jobs. That is kind of how Jesse and I connected and started talking and, you know, seeing all the things that maybe we're missing, where those gaps were, and then how we could potentially help start to fill some of those gaps. There was some people like not one person, not two people, but many people that thought that the, the letters that Jesse was talking about was, was about Jennifer. <laughs> So I just thought that was so funny. Like people read the book, 
it's not Jennifer. No, okay? it's, not Jennifer. <laughs> it's not Jennifer. But one of the cool things that happened as a result of uh, Jennifer chasing Jesse down back in, in in Dallas where it happened, like, and that's that's the way we're going to remember it, right, Jesse? Of course we Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, no, no BS with Jen and Jess was then later born. How did that come to be? It started with the letters, right? The we had an I had an idea about having a live stream, a conversation about the letters that I had been written to me, translating 5S, or maybe more appropriately contextualizing the 5S system and applying it to personal relationships. That was for like my personal relationship. But I knew they were powerful. So reached out to Jen. Said, hey, crazy idea, three hour conversation, said, okay, this is gonna be amazing, let's do it. And so we started the live streams of 5S in relationships. As we were having those conversations, Buddy said it perfectly. I love the way Buddy said, Buddy was like, oh my God, he found like all of a sudden there's this group, this space that he was able to go to and, and receive something that we didn't really know we needed. Like I needed it way more than I knew I needed it. And the folks that came and participated, I think also said, what is this? I want more, I don't know what it is, but I want more. And so Buddy was like, man, we're running out of S's. <laughs> like We need to continue these conversations. And, and so Jen and I, as we, again, we have a very detailed plan. Um, <laughs> after the fifth S it was like, okay, we need to do like a follow-up. And then we had another follow-up to the follow-ups. It was seven. And along that way, what became apparent was we now had a responsibility. Like we peeled the scab off of this thing and people were becoming more vulnerable and sharing and being like growing, connecting with one another virtually, which is still kind of mind blowing, but they were sharing things in the chat that they've never shared before. And so because of the, right, the client, our customer was indicating to us that they wanted more, that we needed to keep doing this, that now we have a responsibility. Jen and I sat down and said, hey, like we need to, we need to keep this going. What do we do? And it's like, wow, you went back and forth. And I said, well, hold on, let's go back to our, our milestone plan over here. <laughs> and and <laughs> I said, oh, we're going to start this platform. And we had already known, no, I'm joking. It was like, well, let's keep having conversations. What do we call it? Well, what do we do? It's like, well, we kind of, it's like kind of no BS. We just talk no BS with Jen and Jess. And, and bam, we put it out there and the community continues to grow. The depth and conversation continues to grow. The depth and vulnerability. I mean, it, it, there's probably five or so live streams where one of us didn't tear up or, or allergies, right? Five, yeah. maybe five where allergies didn't take over. Um, but we continue to get more vulnerable as individuals and with the group. You said the, the power of how it was created was that you and I and how we showed up and how you, that we talk about trust, vulnerability, being real, you know, not, not putting BS out there. And you do a great job of emphasizing that's how you and I showed up, not having any idea or plan of who was going to be out there and who would even care. And we just showed up and we were authentic in what we were saying. We we're super vulnerable, but we trusted each other. And so I think people came in, more than one person, and saw and witnessed that, and it made them vulnerable. And it made them feel that they were in a place that they could be safe. And so there's that piece and the psychological safety that I know you talk about a lot that we were creating with each other and people were witnessing what this is, and not all of them had ever experienced any of them, not, not all of them had experienced it. And so some of them, we talk about it at the job site, we want to create this psychologically safe space, you know, in our work, but people were witnessing it and wanting to be a part of it. So there was that piece. And then the other one for me, which was huge is, Jesse's funny with his, what is our plan? Our plan literally is our tribe, our people that show up, help us identify what's next. And so those are two things that I, and you can, I want you to dig into, because I know they're both important, but they're so, those are huge things that continue to help this grow and just be bigger every time. Absolutely true. And I, I got to be a, a part of this and thank you for the shout outs of the book, multiple shout outs, freaking love that. You guys are really inspiring. And I've, I've heard other people say, 
uh, Jesse and Jennifer wrote a book. I'm like, I've got a book I want to write too. And I was like, <laughs> write it, write it. So you're, you're sparking people, ripples of impact. You've got people across the industry that are stepping up. And I've watched people. I told, I called Jesse after he just did his collabo session with Thomas LeMay last week, I was on the road and I called him and I said, it is amazing to see the growth of people in your tribe and to see like how far people have come and they, they themselves attribute it back to being part of the no BS with Jen and Jess, like the way that Thomas has shown up and, and really like just taken off, like he's leveled up multiple times. And I called him afterwards, Jesse, and I talked to him for like two hours and I said, Thomas, you better get to work because you're going to, you're about to get in trouble. So (laughs) Thomas is amazing. And I I think our first conversation, Jesse, it was funny when we were talking, Thomas was like, I mean, like, I'm sitting here with Jennifer, like there's been times at, at Congress where like, I saw you, Jennifer, and I didn't like, I didn't want to come up to you. Cause I was like scared of like, what would, what the conversation would be. I'm like, like, are you kidding me? Like, I was like, you're freaking amazing. Like, I'm just better being in your space, but like, that's the people that are around us. Like it's, it's just the humility and it's just the value that they have. And they're just like, Oh, but you're, but you help me do this. And Hey, I can help you do that. And they, like, that's the conversations we're having. It's just crazy. I, I think Jen, like the psychological safety, you know, it's a popular buzzword, right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, my favorite thing is to watch leaders say, Hey, I want you to contribute. And, and this is a psychologically safe space. Tell me what's on your mind. Like, okay, <laughs> clearly we don't understand what this means. But to your point, Felipe, the growth that we're able to experience with with the tribe, with each other, with you. I mean, you've spoken into my life and given us direction and, and ideas of how Jason Schroeder's done the same thing. Like this community is full of like reciprocal propulsion. We support each other. We breathe into each other. We grow together and continue to do that. And for me, like the the effect that I think I see happening from the tribe, from the vulnerability that Jennifer and I demonstrate is people are like Kirby. Man, I I brag about Kirby all the time. People are getting the courage to think about becoming the promise they're intended to be. Like we all have this immense beauty to share with the world, but it's not comfortable. It's a little bit scary. And, And again, with Jen and I doing what we do, the way we do it with the tribe, of course, um, I think it gives people permission to to get a little messy and and try something new and just like let's just get out there. The return of that is tremendous growth. Yeah, I remember even coming to one of the the LinkedIn lives that you all did, and I think it, it was probably one of the Amy's had come on the show because there's so many Amy's that that are in your guys's tribe, and uh, they were sharing some things and some challenges at work, and like the community just like swarmed in and created. It wasn't even just like, it wasn't just you or just Jennifer, but the conditions were set and everybody just swarmed in and completely supported her. And then later coming to later shows, hearing how that made a difference and how she showed up at work, because like you guys said, it doesn't, it doesn't stop at the gate. That's so phenomenal. And even I think for, for people listening, that don't realize like the three of us and pretty much everybody in the tribe doesn't work at the same place. With a couple, there's a couple of exceptions. There's very, there's some people that are from the same company, but for the most part, everybody's from different walks of life. And you guys have even expanded and had people internationally joining in on your no BS sessions. And there's been people from across the Atlantic and across the Pacific. I mean, you got people showing up in different industries from all over. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to put a link in the description below so that you can catch the no BS with Jen and Jess live videos and see exactly how vulnerability is created in a safe way. So people can authentically show up and you can even see, like, I just want to give another shout out to Kirby. She went from being an anonymous LinkedIn user to showing up as always (laughs) Kirby Coates. And (laughs) I mean, and and the people come to like my lives and, and our events and we all, share with each other. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, what, what you're working on, what your role is. If you wear a vest in construction or you don't, it makes no difference. We're all people trying to do things together. So I want to go back to, uh, to the book 
and just for people that don't know what 5S is, because, you know, some people actually, they don't even know, they don't know what it is. So I'm just going to say what each of the 5S stand for, and I'll let Jen and Jess elaborate on it right from the book. And I'll put this picture right here. You've got five sets of actions, first starting with sort, then set in order, then shine, then standardize, and then finally sustain. It's like we start with here and we go here. And I think a big piece of what we were able to do with the book is show the importance of where to start, but also how they grow and feed off each other. And um, instead of it just being a checklist. So the idea of sharing these, these things on a live stream, I was able to decide like, oh, Jennifer is the person that happened when we did the change makers live stream, Felipe, that very first one we yeah. did with the whole group of us, like you, you assembled yeah. that group. And in that conversation, I was like, Oh my God, I think, I think Jen, we could do this. Let me, I think she's crazy enough to try this with me. <laughs> I so didn't even know I was there. crazy enough. And now it's like, Oh, that's what that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Now, you know, yeah. first ever revealed <laughs> on the EBFC show. Jennifer's just the right level of crazy. I got it right this time. Yes, you did. (laughs) Yeah, you did. Changemakers live stream. It's one of my favorites. Yes. Oh, man, that was good stuff. And like that started this inferno that we're all living in right now. And so sort, right? Like the profound thing about this is, like Jen said, it's, it's a system, right? We can apply it to our space, sort, get all the things out of the operation that are unnecessary, get them out of the way clear the desk, do whatever it is um, so that you can surface problems. The way this was written was like, we we can sort our workspace, we can sort the work environment. And that's pretty easy, right? We can understand that directly. But one of the things in here is like, let's sort out and discard the things that we don't need. High level, that could mean a lot of things. Zoom into the personal space, let's sort out uh, resentment, distrust, like holy moly huge huge idea there and so that's kind of the the order of the things and and so in regards to the order you got to do one before you do the next one sort set shine standardize sustain you can do them out of order that's how i do things it's harder that way (laughs) but surprised right like if you sort and get rid of the jealousy and the distrust in a relationship and have those conversations and put them to bed Then you can get into setting things in order, like where should things be? How should things look? Then you can get into shine, like, okay, this is our system. Let's polish that up and make sure we're achieving the the experience that we want to achieve. I talked with Sean Sean Moran, who's also another lean freak. He works here in San Antonio. And he explained to me, we're doing a study action team uh, with the San Antonio and Dallas COP on lean and love. And like the superstar celebrity authors are participating in that study action team. Um, And Sean was, I love Sean because he's totally transparent. He's like, Jess, you know, when I was reading the book and getting, getting involved with this study action team, I'm thinking like, how how are we going to, there's not a lot of words in the first chapter. Like, what are we going to talk about for a whole hour? And then we had the study action team and there were tears, there was vulnerability, there was trust, like it was deep. <laughs> and he's like, Jess, after I went through that, I was, I had already read the book. And I was like, man, I need to go back and read the book again. <laughs> and he says, I didn't get past the first chapter because as I was reading it with this new perspective, I'm like, man, there's some stuff here that I could, that would benefit me and my wife. And like, he never said it, and it's not explicit to do one thing, but at the end of the chapter, there's que- there's reflection questions on right. the subject matter that was presented. And I think that, like, that wasn't by design, it's kind of by accident. That <laughs> caused him to say, well, let me stop and let me go do some of this stuff before I go and apply the next level of, of this system. I think what? that's beautiful. And I called, uh, I don't remember because the two of you are so awesome. I, you know, sometimes I call one or, or both of you or we do a group text and I, I just lose track of it, but <laughs> I called one of you and you tell me which one I call and you tell me. And I said, I'm reading the book now. I'm halfway through the book. I'm excited that I'm going to have you on the show. And I said, the funny thing about this book that I had, I didn't, I couldn't have planned this, that this was going to happen, but I can't just read it through and not stop and reflect. 
So who did I call? Which one of the two of you? I know you said that to me. I, I may not be okay. So then I person. so then I called Jennifer yes. or or Jen because we're on a Jen basis now because she's yes. Jennius. I called Jennifer and I said, "Yeah, I'm trying to read this. Like I wanted to read it all the way through and like make notes and be a good uh, interviewer, right? And but as I'm reading it, I would read a little bit and then I'd pause. And I just want to show from the book uh, the thing that Jesse was talking about at the end. There's this place to doodle because that's super important. And then here's the the section at the end of each chapter where you've got some homework, which is, you can tell who's the teacher here, Jess. It's not you. The teacher has freaking given us homework, ladies and gentlemen. And so like it just in that sort section where Jesse said, eliminating the clutter, sorting out what's not needed, discarding things like one of my favorite masters of all time said Bruce Lee. And uh, some of the questions here, I think these are beautiful questions. I'm just going to take one of these questions. So people get your copy of the book and get after it. Uh, what is stealing your time? When you're trying to figure out, you know, what to eliminate, and just think about what's stealing your time. There's so many things in that word stealing, such a loaded word. So beautiful question. I love the space for the doodles and markups. And I've dog-eared this bad boy, like, all over the place. So if you just look at, uh, there's my book, it's all been beat up. I've been traveling, this book has already had, like, it's got frequent flyer miles. It's my <laughs> companion on so many flights, people have been watching me, you know, reading this book, sitting next to me, this big guy get all freaking reflective on the airplane, but it's happened. There's been some allergy moments for sure. Oh, watch out. Just blame it on the, you know, on the, the little vent in the air, just blowing too hard in my yeah. eye. That's what yes. it was. It's like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I love that, Felipe. I love that. I love it. One, just your story and talking about your traveling with it and just the, the, the nuggets of it, because while we were editing, way more editing on my part, but while we were editing, you know, it was going through and the first phase was, you know, editing, making sure the flow was good, making sure the, you know, the content was good. And we had all the information in there that we felt would need, needed to be shared. That was kind of the first run through. And then Jesse pushed print. And then we had a, <laughs> we were, we, were we had a plumber's edition plumber's without edition. it being finally edited, but that's okay. So we have, we had that edition and then we were going through and I was doing more editing. And as we were going through, we also identified more uh, visuals that needed to be created. Right. And so, because I, I travel a lot with work, you know, on the airplane is usually when I can like get stuff done. So I would be sitting in the airplane and this is an example specifically, and I would have my printed out copy of the book that I'm editing. So I'm flipping pages, you know, marking things up. Um, and I'm also my iPads open because all the drawings and the doodles I drew. So it would be like notes of places of, Hey, Jennifer, we had, we need an additional doodle. So I'm in my iPad drawing also while I'm editing and I was on a flight with like my whole <laughs> everything in front of me and there was a person sitting next to me on the flight and I and again when I'm in my zone I'm just doing it and about halfway through the flight she says man that's that's gonna be a great book <laughs> and I was like oh she's like well I'm just like reading like some of the quotes and some of the stuff she's like that, that's really valuable she goes what you know what is it and I started talking to her she's like oh like like you wrote that. I'm like, well, I co-authored it. And so anyway, the whole conversation, the rest of the flight was just, she was just reading little excerpts of things over my shoulder while, you know, while I had all this crap in front of me. And I was just like, holy crap. And I got off the, I got off the call. I got off the plane and I called Jesse. I'm like, Jesse, like this random person that I have no idea who they are. We're just looking at pieces and parts of this and like saw value. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that is super cool. As I was traveling, with this book, I would set this on my, on my hotel beds. It slept on the bed, like right next to me, you know, like it was like, I was on my side of a king size bed. And then this was my companion on the other side. And it was, it was beautiful. You have to let Jesse tell the story um, on again, the cover. And then also his, his mom got to, got to see it and read it. And then also why, why there is an additional doodle on the front. Jesse, can you tell that story please? Yeah. Yeah, so the cover, like y'all don't know, but a lot of the decisions, a ton of the decisions, Jennifer didn't have any input on. Like I was just making decisions because, you know, I, my I'm a consultant, and so like I'm running my business, and I have a lot, my time is much more flexible than than Jen's, and she's she's a mother, and she's got a lot going on. So I'm like, I don't want to distract her with things. 
and also I wanted to go fast. So I just made decisions. Well, as I was like, as we were developing it, uh, Princess Kim, she and I worked on the cover and she's like, you should check with Jen. I'm like, yeah, I, I, she's good with it. She, I never checked with Jen. And so when we that. did the very first like reveal, uh, it was on a Zoom call with a bunch of folks, a bunch of our people. I was there. You were there. Yeah. Jen, that was the very first time Jen saw the cover. <laughs> like very, very first time. And so part of Jen's message is ripples of impact. And so that 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 had to be in there. Um, the color scheme and so forth, that was a lot, that was between Kim and I coming up with it. And the rose was intentional because lean in love, there's what does that mean, right? There's a lot of people that, some of us know what lean is about. Some of us know what love, but like, this is a little different. And so the intent was like, this is about relationships. Yes, romantic, but also personal, professional, all of the above. So it was a, it was like a teaser, like how do we hook people? I, I think it's a good uh, anchor for people to draw, be drawn in. Anyhow, we get the we ordered the release the the plumber's edition for editing purposes or review purposes and i was out of town so i had it shipped to my mom's house and so my mom and i she's like mijo i got this book is this the book you were talking like i was like yeah she's like is it a romance book <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> no because she's one of those dirty old ladies that reads those those type of romance books <laughs> it's i'm like no mom that's my book she's like it looks like a romance book and she read it and she's like, man, this is really good. And the doodles, like Jen is the doodle, the doodle or the doodle list. Um, she was like, this is, this is different. Like I thought it was a romance book. It's not a romance book, but there's doodles and there's like, she's like it's, it, I like it. It's different. Like I couldn't put it down. I had to keep reading all of it. Um, and I'm like, okay. I was like, well, when are you going to talk about me being a co-author on this book? Like, all we're talking <laughs> about is Jen and, and the cover. What about me? Let's talk about me. <laughs> that is so true. That's how that's how it is in our house. Is like everyone gets all and and everybody who's listening, we're all just people, just like <laughs> you. And in our house, we're not famous. We're nobody. Sometimes in our homes, we're less than nobody, <laughs> depending on the day of the week. So. I want to encourage everybody to reach out to, to Jen and Jesse and you see them because they're going to be out and about all over the world. You know, feel free to just walk up and say, hi, yes, please. please. And same for me, like come and talk to me. Some people know, like I've made so many friends just by, they wanted to come and say hi to me. And, and I always joke like five minutes with me is, it's going to be a guaranteed six hours with me. Yes. Cause we got, we got stuff to talk about, but I want to go back yeah. to a book and I love in chapter two, where you have set an order, here's a beautiful quote from Jesse. And in the book, they've got these beautiful box outs for quotes. And here, Jess says, lean has universal applications and can be applied to anything. And I just thought like, there's so many people that, uh, you know, like you guys said, they, they're in the gate, they're doing it at work, and they just don't bring it out. It stays locked up and trapped there. And then you know, with this section, this chapter two, when I got to the end of the book, you guys have a section at the end where you talk about, you know, what do you do next after you read all of this? And there's, there's a part, you know, in this, I think it might be in the sustaining section, which, and I'm just jumping around because that's what I had no plan, Jeff. I had no plan, obviously. Love it. <laughs> and so you talk about this suffering and you, you mentioned like four or five different levels of suffering what was it like when you guys were talking about connecting that application to anything and then combating the suffering that people are having in their lives? The suffering didn't come from like, okay, here's our plan or, Hey, we have these and it's going to help the suffering. The suffering was revealed throughout the live streams. Cause like we didn't, that was not the, like the goal or the end result or, Hey, here's our focus is to help people not suffer. But as we were talking each time, each one that each S that kept it kept growing and kept growing this the vulnerability and what was being shared in the live streams and in the chat like people were hurting or people were hurting other people and and they were starting to recognize it and they were and and all of a sudden we had like they had they had 
they were accepting it and they were seeing it. And then they were like, okay, now what do I do? And, and so I, I think that also pulled in, you know, Jesse talking about therapy and we were talking about the construction industry and, you know, suicide and mental health. Like that was not a plan of we're going to talk about mental health or we're going to talk about suffering and how people, you know, have mistreated people. We're going to talk, really the goal was for he and I to talk about our experiences and then be able to help people understand, but what was being shared over and over and over. And then the depth that just, it just kept getting more where we would get off the calls and just go like, I cannot believe someone like put that out there. And these are, but it was a trusted space and it was people that needed it and they didn't know it. And so the suffering, like it revealed itself. And then when, when it started happening over and over again, and people were feeding into it, we're just like, Jesse, we, we've got to address this. We've got to make sure that this is part of our message because, you know, it was underlying, it was kind of unconsciously there, but it wasn't really something we were intentionally planning on, you know, making be a, be a part of this, but it had to be. Like the universality of it, that was, I got challenged by, by the, the person who wrote the letters. She said, Jesse, you said she was a, she's an attorney and she took an interest into this because I was always reading and whatever. And so she was applying it at work and she had asked me at one point, it's like, is this like, is this just for construction? I said, no, ma'am, it's universal. Like anything and everything, these things can be applied to it. So she challenged me and she says, right before she handed me the letter, she said, you said this lean stuff is universal. I said, 100%. She said, okay, I want you to read these. And it was like directly applied to our personal relationship. Proof that it's universal, right? And, and I'll go further on it is that you, Jen, you touched on how a lot, or I think you said it, Felipe, a lot of us use the things at work and then leave it at work. And so for me, I know that the, the reason I got hooked on lean and decided to make it a part of my life is because I experienced the value it brought to me as an individual, using it at work, using it at home, like all different concepts, different ways of thinking. I had to internalize it first and experience the value for myself. And I think that better equips me to serve people in understanding it and putting it into practice. Because I'm not, it's not a conceptual thing. I've lived it. So that's a universality piece of it the suffering piece you know we started having cl clubhouse after parties so we would have the live stream and then we said let's get on clubhouse so we could talk with people because that's that's another level of connection and thomas lemay was the one who pointed it out who also pointed out that we should have a collabo session on the goal when you and i were having the lives uh, the conversations around um the lean builder the lean builder yes and so like, it, it's all connected. Anyhow, he pointed out like, man, our industry is suffering and is in need of healing. And we have this suicide, substance abuse, mental illness. We have these things that could be mended through this thinking. This could contribute to that. That led to buddy opening up spencer opening up so then we said what if we have a conversation this was the last one um what if we have a conversation with leaders in the industry talking about the the impact standard operating procedure has had on their personal relationships and buddy got up there spencer got up there adam thomas and they all shared like real brian too i think right that's yeah. right. Brian Winningham was also up yeah. there. And for me, when we had that conversation, the suffering that they had shared with the group, the suffering that they had as a result of going through their careers, our careers in a way of having the divide in place and having hard lines between the gate did not serve them. And that we were all, my, my takeaway is we were all suffering in silence. And, and so, yeah, that's why now we got to that point as a result of the conversations and what people were sharing with us. And that's kind of the intent is how do we help people no longer suffer in silence? And if I can build my skills at developing relationships, I'm not alone anymore. And if I'm not alone, 
the world is different. The world is brighter. Absolutely. So much brighter. And it's a, it's amazing to hear those stories. I remember the first time that I went to like a LCI event and we were talking to people. I had people like break down and cry that I had to like hug and embrace. And I was thinking like, this conference is a little bit different. I never would have expected that people would be breaking down. And then that, it just became like a chain reaction where it just, now I, I show up and I just expect that people are going to get allergies and we're going to have to console them a little bit. As Buddy said, I I love the way that uh, Buddy talks about, you know, the things that impacted him. And he's talked about using the mirror to make messages to themselves. And you talked about in the book, you know, using the calendar. I just want to say too, Jesse, like as I was reading this book, like I I knew what the outcome was of the story because I know you and I know your background. But as I was reading the book and going back in time, I was like secretly rooting for you to mend the relationship so that y'all would stay together. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I hope they stay together. It's like, you know, they don't stay together, dummy. <laughs> but it was, I love it. I love it. I just thought, uh, you know, we got to grow. And there's definitely been so much growth. So I wanted to flip it back to, to Jen. What What's a surprise that happened as a result of this partnership and becoming a co-author of this book for you, Jen, that you never in a million years would have guessed was going to happen? A lot that has happened, but the result that has created more ripples of impact is, and this kind of got identified throughout the process, <clears throat> the people that are part of this tribe, and Jesse started kind of hit on this a little bit, you hit on it, on just the different companies that are represented and things like that. I think we need to take it another level. The people that are part of this tribe are people that are in positions to significantly impact change in their companies. So it's not just, I work for a different company than you, you know, I'm working, you know, it's, it's, we're competitors. We're people that are in positions to cultivate change. And so it's not just I show up one day just to have, you know, to hang out and then I get to go back to my grind. I get to listen to a conversation. I get to hear what other people are saying. I get to contribute. And then I get to show up to work different. I get to show up to work and have different conversations. I get to challenge. I get to make people, you know, get people a little uncomfortable because of conversations that happened on our platform and on in the in the after party and some of the chat and some of the conversations that Jesse and I have, it's like crap. Like I got I got to do something different when I go back to work. And to me, that was it's one thing to put something out there because you hope it impacts one person, but the the conversations and how they grew, and then the friendships and the things that have happened from just starting these conversations are people. I mean, we are in the same space with people that we compete against for work and it doesn't even matter like that does that that line is not even drawn it's just we're in this together wanting to impact change in an industry we know it's broken and we care about the other human that is across from us and like to me that was none of that was a part of a conversation Jesse and I had when we started yeah that's phenomenal and I love too, Jesse, you know, from, I was hanging out with Jennifer one time in San Diego and she had like, she's like, Oh, I got to step away. I got this call with Jesse. And I'm like, Hey, you guys have calls on the regular. And she's like, yep. We regularly check in. And then, and Adam's been a part of that. And we've gone to some events where, you know, the, the four of us are talking, you know, not even all at the same time, but at different times. And we're just helping each other. And we, we deeply care about each other. And as things have happened, to each of us individually, like we've been there and had each other's backs. And I think that's something that, like you said, was obviously missing from the industry, but we were, we were just clueless, like earlier in our careers. Like I remember just thinking like, I just got to suffer by myself and just figure this out. Like, this is my thing to figure out. I never thought to, I was like, clearly I can't talk to my boss about this because, you know, he's creating this grind situation that I'm in. Right. So like, who do you talk to? And like people outside of construction, don't understand like what it's like when we talk about what we do and how we work to people that don't work in this industry they're always like looking at us like we're crazy to be here and i think even there yep right and i think we are just a little bit crazy that we keep showing up you have to be just a little bit off something's just a little bit turned the wrong way and here we are what as a result of this collaboration you've had with jennifer has been a positive in your life that like even you talked about getting a therapist and you've been doing a lot of, 
I'm a huge fan. People, if you don't follow Jesse on TikTok, you need to get on it because he's just like a boss getting on there. We'll put a link to his TikTok mm-hmm. as well. But like you've had some surprisingly cool things, I think, that you've been sharing. But you know, from your perspective, just think about it right now. Like, what's a good surprise collaborating with with Jennifer has had for you? So one, it, it's a personal one. It, um, getting comfortable, building, embracing the promise I'm intended to be. Right? Like our relationship, the conversations that we have gives me courage to say more, to share deeper, to speak exactly what I feel and believe and think. I mean, you and I've had this conversation, Felipe, a year, two years ago, whatever it was, um, about like, just go, just do you, just make it, take action. Um, and, and I think we all experience this, right? It, there's some apprehension about what could happen. What, you know, when I was working with the company and started my podcast, I was nervous about how the company was going to respond to me having a podcast and me sharing my thoughts and my ideas. And, and like, that's a real thing, right? Corporations, maybe they don't intend to do it, but the way their damn social media policy is written <laughs> scares people. There was, I would, I'll say the filters of between what I was projecting and who I am, rather who I can be, were, were many. And over this time, those filters continue to go away, go away. Like the, the makeup, the mask starts coming off. The more authentic me starts coming out, um, more pronounced. Uh, like I'm funny, I'm crazy, high energy. There was a time where that's all you could see. I'm also very deep, pensive, kind of philosophical. That comes out more. And so now it's like, it's whatever, whatever comes out in the moment comes out in the moment. And I'm gonna share those things. TikTok is a perfect place to share all of it. And so I'm leveraging TikTok for that. Um, but the huge benefit of where we're at is, is I am able to embrace me more and more as we continue going forward. And what I mean by that is like ideas. A year ago, we were thinking about starting a live stream, right? I mean, we're in September, we're in the middle of the live streams and we're thinking about what the hell is this? What are we going to do? A year now, by the end of this year, I'll have two books published and two audio books out. Dang. Right? Like that's that's yeah. a matter of the courage that I've been able to develop as a result of this relationship, as a, as a result of being vulnerable, sharing my voice in service to others, I'm able to discover new avenues to serve the growth is like super, super profound. Again, it's exactly going to the plan that we wrote out 16 months ago. <laughs> I love that. And, and I'm going to go to Jennifer. You don't get to escape. So Jen, you know, when before, before all of this, before Jesse tangled into your life mm-hmm. and, uh, or salsa in, depending on the day of the week, right? <laughs> you were super professional. You had an amazing job already, arguably super successful, admired by many people, but then something flipped. And I I've been following you on social media even before, because early, I mean, there was only so many people that had our type of job. I mean, mm-hmm. it's probably like in the U S maybe six of us at the time, you know, years and years ago when this all started, but I noticed after the salsa tango dancing, Jesse Plummer, you know, mixed in, on LinkedIn in particular, you went extremely vulnerable and started sharing some family messages and started sharing, you know, talking about your dad in a very open way and high engagement and, and like the tribe showed up, you know, and supported that. And I, of course I was there too, cause I'm in the tribe. Hello. Yes, of course. But can you go back? Did that happen? Like just organically, or do you think that like Jesse peeled some layers back on you. I mean, where, where do you think it is? I want to hear your opinion, your thoughts, your reflection. Uh, okay. Um, well, I think it was a couple of things. Number one is I have always, and I don't deny this, shown up with armor. Like that is what I do. 
to protect me, whether it's, you know, growing up in a single father home, having to make some, you know, tough decisions early, having changed um, professions, coming into an industry where I didn't have the background that everyone else has. Um, again, raising children, you know, there's a lot of things that I have to do to protect me. And that's how I show up. And it's not that I'm not open to make connections. I just get to pick and choose where those are. And so that is how I show up and it has helped. It has served me well. And it has also allowed me to do the things that were important to me. And so that, um, you know, that is how I showed up talking to Jesse. It was the same way we like that. Just, that was just how I show up to protect me. And I'm not sure there's anyone out there that has, doesn't live that way in some, in some aspect, whether it's their heart or their, you know, their in work life, personal life, whatever those are. And I'm extremely protective of my, of my children. And so, um, you know, talking a little bit about my personal life, but not too much, because again, it was a very hard line. That divide was real. And um, I think, a couple of things that happened when Jesse and I collided, because there's no other way to say it. When we collided, a couple of things that happened is one, we were instantly in each other's space and able to have some conversations that were not normal for me and comfortable for me. And I, whatever it was, the trust and vulnerability that was there for both of us was not, again, nothing that I had experienced that quickly. And so again, I was a little bit leery and he can say all, he can say what he wants, but he knows I came in with protection. I came in with armor and I, he was there. He helped me a little bit with that, but I was still, I was still like, what is going on here? Like, this is making me super uncomfortable and I'm not okay. Um, and he was right there with me. Like he saw it, he acknowledged it. He continued to push and continue to ask questions and that's the other part of it I'm going to hit in a minute, but he, he didn't go, oh, this is whatever. And then leave or, Hey, let's go there. And then, and then you can figure that out. When he walked in, he stayed and he was right there. And he, you know, was <laughs> the poor guy. Is, I'm, I'm really hoping he never gets in a relationship because whoever that is, is going to hate me. And it will probably cause them not to work out. I'm just going to say that <laughs> on the record is that I, again, he has to deal with phone calls from me all the time. But what, what happened there very quickly was um, we were able to become the best of friends, but it was based on the trust that we had in each other and believed in it with everything in us that I, I would go over a hill with him and have no idea what's on the other side. And the vulnerability that it wasn't just one of us, that he went there and he saw that I was getting there and he kind of helped me, but he didn't push it or he pushed just enough to where he still, I still knew he was protecting me and he was taking care of what he knew and he was going to make sure that I was okay. And again, I, I had not experienced that before. So I think that was a huge piece of how we got to be able to be where we are. The other part is I mean, his tagline, he is the questionator and you can, he asks questions in a way that one, I had to self-reflect in a way I never had to self-reflect in my entire life. Cause I was able to, I was, you know, intelligent enough and smart enough and being in spaces enough to where I could direct the conversations and I can redirect them and I could get information from people. And it didn't ever have to be about me ever. And I was able to do that, navigate that because of watching, observing, paying attention and asking questions. And Jesse flipped that on me and it like, it was completely a game changer. And it also made me start self-reflecting on what I was doing on social media, how I was showing up to work, how I was leading meetings, how I was engaging with people. And so I think it was a culmination of both of those things that I know I show up different and I know that Jesse knows Jesse's seen the progression and I still have so far to so much more to go, but it's now not being scared to show up and have a conversation that may make other people uncomfortable. Oh my God. Love, love, love. Very special. Thanks to my guest. I'm Felipe engineer Manriquez. The EBFC show is created by Felipe and produced by a passion to build easier and better. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, everybody. 
Let's go build. <laughs>